and security and senior citizen now convenes this public hearing public hearing notices were uh, given to the media first notice on thursday july 7th 2016 and second notice on tuesday july 12 2016 for the record today's thursday july 14 2016 the time now is 207 uh, p.m the committee will hear and accept testimonies both oral and written on bill 345-33 an act to disapprove the proposed rules and regulations governing the Wakin Casey Conception, the second Compassionate Cannabis Use Act of 2013. And um, the committee originally had scheduled today um, the public hearing on Bill 341-33. This is relative to establishing the rates and fees for services of the Guam Memorial Hospital Authority at a level which is commensurate with but not to exceed Medicare rates. Um, we are postponing this hearing and so that hearing will be scheduled another time. I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, my colleagues who are here with me this afternoon. Senator Tina Rose Munya Barnes, thank you. Senator Tommy Morrison and Senator Tom Atta, thank you very much for, for being here. We'll now proceed to Bill 345, and um, I'd like to ask the author of the bill to um, give a brief um, um, synopsis of the bill, and then we'll have the public, those of you who wish to provide testimony to please sign up the signing sheet to the table to my right and then we'll call you up when it's um, when that time comes okay senator uh, mr. chair thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to briefly speak on this bill today half a day and good afternoon everybody uh, bill 345-33 COR will reject the proposed draft rules and regulations in anticipation of new provisions. Uh, Mr. Chair, I want to note that in order to prevent a default approval of the current rules, uh, we have to reject the, uh, these rules. I will uh, stress that we have to reject these rules in order to move forward with a strength, strengthening the provisions in our medical cannabis program. Uh, I do, uh, Mr. Chair, want to take this time to thank the Department of Public Health and the Office of the Attorney General's Office for all the work that they have done on these proposed rules and regulations. Uh, yes, it was a tremendous amount of work and effort that went into this process. However, as we began the review of the proposed rules and regulations, we realized that key pieces of legislation should be put into place. Uh, I want to note for the record that many states have uh, begun implementation of their programs, and we are able to review uh, their successes and consider them uh, for our program. Uh, amending our cannabis program rules and regulations as well as the Casey Act is inevitable. I'm sure that um, further amendments uh, will be added to the Casey Act in the future and um, what was good in the past probably is not so good today and, and uh, this is why we have to continuously update and amend our laws. Um, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to the implementation of our program. Many states have been rigorously uh, amending their programs, rules and regs, as well as their statutes. And uh, this is what brings us here today, uh, Mr. Chair. The medical uh, cannabis industry has evolved in just a few short years, and we need to catch up um, with the new developments that have been enough, that is uh, successful in other places. Most uh, importantly, we need to create a program that addresses the needs for our patients here. Uh, we had several hearings to engage the public and help us drive where our program needs to go so that patients get safe and affordable access to medical cannabis. And I'm sure uh, by the end of this process, we will create a program that will truly benefit the patients first and foremost. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do want to take the time to thank you uh, for continuing to be upfront uh, uh, with this issue and work closely uh, with us to see uh, the realization and know that uh, in order for us to move forward, we first have to reject the provisions that have been provided to us today. Senator Masi. Thank you very much, um, Senator Barnes. Now I ask um, Ms. Lynn Flores, August Fest, Andrea Pelicani, Leilani Pareto, Megalahi Megamiti. Okay, I can't read the writing, but thank you. Thank you very much for being here, uh, Ms. Flores. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, I hadn't expected to testify, but there were only a few of us in the room. 
But uh, I did want to say that uh, I definitely agree with Senator Barnes that uh, the original rules and regs are uh, totally inappropriate for Guam. Uh, I was especially struck by how inappropriate the fees were and that it afforded no opportunity for the people with less money in their pockets to be able to participate in developing uh, any kind of an economy that would allow them to participate in a growing program. <clears throat> because this would be their most likely means of getting into the uh, marijuana industry. <clears throat> it was based solely upon an advantage for the wealthier people on island. And I thought that was the worst thing to happen. It would be just a perpetuation of the way things are now as far as the economy is concerned. Also, it did nothing to really help the people that were going to need the medicine. Uh, it was just a totally preposterous proposal economically. It did not allow for home growing, which was originally approved and uh, didn't work. It will not work for this island. Uh, the proposals that I have seen are uh, most fitting and I think they should be proposed and adopted. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, ma'am. Mr. August Fest. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I agree with many of the things this fellow citizen has said and my other statements of the first draft of the rules and the second draft of the rules. I do here support the rejection of the rules i sent you an email just to add it with the written may i address shortly very briefly the trifecta the other two bills um short brief same thing as the fees of the last two sets of draft rules the bill 343 is still over the top economically for somebody to try to start a small business to get seven thousand dollars for 50 plants that's that's going into the hole especially if you have to pay rent somewhere to do it um 340 um 344 home cultivation i think we should hold off on that because the da is going to be making an announcement on rescheduling so let's see where we're at with that before we get too involved in that, but also in 344, it had six plants that's totally useless for a patient. Uh, if you know anything about cultivation, you can end up with half of those being males, and you don't know that until 70 days into it. So then you end up with three females to hold you off. It takes four and a half months from seed to harvest. That's you got to be able to cultivate enough to last you until the next harvest. So I suggested Senator Barnes square footage versus plant numbers. Um, 32 to 50 foot should be enough for anybody. You can separate seedlings and vegetation from your flowering where it needs a dark cycle. So you can split that 50 into two or three sections and be able to get yourself from one harvest to the next in four and a half months. Um, other than that, we'll see where we go from here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We, um, Senator Barnes, um, as a subcommittee chair, will be having hearings on those bills. And so um, next week, um, at 20th and 22nd, and so the public will have the opportunity at that time to present um, testimony on that as well. Thank you very much, sir. I just go ahead, go ahead and go to Michael Lahi. Great, thank you. What a what a gentleman. Half a day. My name is Leilani Pareto, and I'm with Women Grow Guam. Senators, thank you. The fact that we're even here having this conversation shows that we are living in amazing times. Sorry, I'm nervous. Before going on, I have to make a confession. Prior to joining Women Grow Guam. 
and before I adopted the mission of advocating for safe patient access with cannabis locally. I had assumed that everyone knew that great strides were being made in cannabis research, despite its classification as a Schedule I drug. I would hear stories touting the healing properties of cannabis and every now and then a miraculous claim. Enough tidbits to inspire lasting wonder and curiosity regarding the potential of this plant. Then came the research, the emerging therapeutic and medicinal benefits of cannabis, and I assumed that everyone knew. Well, you know what happens when you assume. I assumed that everyone knew and I was wrong. While doing research and gathering data for cannabis advocacy, Women Grow Guam favored asking critics of medicinal marijuana for insight into their stance. The question that we would pose is what is your biggest fear in the implementation of a medicinal cannabis program? We received a myriad of answers, but pertaining specifically to those who oppose a program that they feel is, quote, too liberal or is a push for legalization, and the other extreme, which is apathetic. The disparity between the two collective mindsets is real, and both are unacceptable to me. One has the absolute presence of fear. From this side, we hear outdated ideas and myths that are reminiscent of reefer madness. Propaganda and misinformation that's been long dispelled, but being verbally said with such conviction. The critics ask, quote, what happens if this gets into the wrong hands, unquote. And they ask this with genuine concern. With genuine concern, I respond that it already is. Kids can buy marijuana easier than they can buy alcohol or cigarettes. Drug dealers don't ask for ID, nor do they require you to disclose your medical condition. They do not, however, offer the exact amount of THC CBD concentration, and they usually don't have advice regarding which particular strain is effective as an anti-inflammatory. Other critics fret, quote, I'm worried about this being passed inadvertently into the wrong hands, unquote, because they truly don't want cannabis getting into the wrong hands. My answer is, it already is. I'm always so confused when fear is directed towards cannabis. In the history of cannabis, there's not one single recorded event of a lethal overdose, not even one. A person has died from drinking too much water, but never from cannabis. I hate to be so incessantly redundant. Critics wonder, what will we do if people are driving on the roads under the influence and too stoned? I hate to break it to you, but they already are. This program should protect qualified patients from prosecution for consuming cannabis as treatment for their debilitating con condition. DUI was, is, and always will remain illegal. But it does not erase the fact that there already is an established illicit market in Guam, and that this illicit market is strengthen strengthened in the absence of a safe, affordable, and accessible medicinal cannabis program. A major concern is the effect a medicinal cannabis program will have on the community. In Colorado, where cannabis is legal, not just for medical use, Traffic DUIs and accidents have decreased. Violent crime has decreased. The percentage of deaths caused by opioid overdoses has significantly decreased. And teen use, surprisingly, has even de decreased. They were giving back the citizens of Colorado money because they had so much from taxing and regulating their new industry. It doesn't seem like the very moral fabric of their communities is unraveling. So there lives the presence of unnecessary fear, and I find this unacceptable. On the other hand, a di different collective mindset wears a mask, slightly detached, devoid of fear, and sometimes regard for the law. This different mindset finds the whole cannabis debate boring because they possess the wisdom, sure certainty, and knowledge that cannabis is neither dangerous nor should it even be considered a drug. They recognize the medical value, but they refuse to believe that their government will govern them adequately and listen to their concerns. And so they fear no persecution and they praise the illicit market because it's their rebel song. They accept the status quo and that is also unacceptable. And then there is us, the majority, proponents of a safe and accessible program. And we support the passing of bills 343, 344, and 345. We still believe in you. That's why we're here. When I ask myself what I'm scared of, it is simple. I fear that our elected representatives will not support and enact the will of the people and provide for a program that's accessible and affordable so that our, loving, our suffering loved ones can heal in peace. I fear that my children or my mom will not have the ease and accessibility to this medicine should they ever need it in the future. I fear complacency with the status quo because it's easier, not because it's better. And I fear not taking a stand for something I believe in. In regards to the federal status and classification of cannabis as a Schedule I drug, 
For me, it becomes irrelevant where we are discussing a medicine that our loved ones need. Federal law precedes state law everywhere that med medicinal marijuana is legalized in the U.S. Still, their local government had the courage to enact the will of the people and to be great. I ask that you not assume like I did. Let's not assume that Guam doesn't have the wherewithal, capacity, skills, functions, resources, or any other substitute word in a short phrase that belies a lack of confidence in the potential of our beautiful island. Remember, we are Guamazing. Please don't assume that you, will pers that you personally will never find medicinal cannabis beneficial as a patient yourself or for a loved one. Lastly, please don't assume that Guam is not innovative or daring enough or bold enough to create a superior and successful policy or program that is suited to us, the constituents of Guam, our home. On behalf of many I've spoken to and myself, I humbly ask that you support the passings of Bills 343, 344, and 345. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And just to clarify again that um, this hearing today is for 345, and then so we'll take that um, and we'll include it for next week's Thank uh, hearing. Thank you. Ms. Pilakani. Thank you, Senator Barnes, Senator Rodriguez, Senator Morrison, Senator Ada, and Senator Torres. My name is Andrea Pilakani, and I'm the president of Women Grow Guam and a founding member of Grassroots Guam. At the, at the final hearing for the proposed rules governing the Wakin Casey Conception II Compassionate Cannabis Use Act of 2013, as prepared by the Department of Public Health and Social Services and transmitted by the Office of the Governor, it was our position and recommendation to reject the proposed rules, and we are in full support of Bill 345. We would like to clarify that rejection of the proposed rules and the introduction of Bill 343 to repeal and reenact the KC statute, as well as Bill 344, a bill to allow home cultivation for qualified patients, is the best path towards strengthening the program in order to allow safe access to patients and provide for a sustainable program for our community. The amended KC law addresses many of our concerns regarding patient privacy, lowered fees, allowing patients to be empowered to decide with their doctor if medical cannabis could be right for them and so many other flaws with the proposed rules. Most importantly, it provides equal protection under the law for patients, and, for patients and businesses, the single most important guiding principle when creating, executing, and enforcing legislation enacted by the people for the people. We urge the Guam legislature to thoroughly review the proposed rules before considering a no vote on Bill 345, creating a program that is neither safe nor sustainable only further serves to continue to encourage and empower the current illicit market. A no vote is a vote for the illicit market and is a vote against the will of the people and the intent of the KC Conception Compassionate Use Act. No matter your position on medical marijuana, voting no on Bill 345 will only hurt our community. We can't say enough that safe patient access is the goal here. All policies should be developed based on safe patient access. Access to patients with fibromyalgia, diabetes, bipolar disorder, disorder, Alzheimer's, autism, asthma, and many other conditions are just as important as patients with cancer and epilepsy and the other debilitating conditions currently listed. Protecting patient privacy is of the utmost importance. Taking illicit cannabis off the street and putting it into a regulatory framework is what we are trying to achieve here. As we meet and talk to more people, we need to really think about how we approach this. Please continue to help us find solutions to support Bills 343 and 344 instead of fighting about the merits of cannabis. We should be done having that conversation. Consider that when you enact policy as an effort to prevent the diversion of regulated medical cannabis onto the street, that you may actually be encouraging the illicit market to continue on, business as usual. Prohibition happened and prohibition ended, and there were many lessons to be learned. If we are not aware of those lessons, we are doomed to repeat them. Instead, let's inspire the world and show everyone who is watching, because they are watching, that we are pioneers, that we take pride in our island, our government, and our people. Sijus Maasi. 
Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Palakani. Half a day. Wow, she make a lot in Maganiti. Don't worry. She had trouble too. So you're not the only one. And it's in the native language, right? Wow. Anyway, let me tell you a story of the laws in Guam, because this is what you guys created, and you guys are, you can be held accountable for. I love their speeches, by the way. Uh, it's good. Anyway, I was arrested. I had a search warrant. You know, I looked at the search warrant, and it had the wrong name, because it's not the same name as the birth certificate. And the address was totally, I don't, I don't even know where that address was. In a court of law in America, my case would have been dismissed just like that. The judge would have been pissed off. Here in Guam, it took me over three years to fight. But since they did not accept that stance of whereas, that's not me. That's not my address. So, but no, I had to fight it. So I pleaded not guilty under the grounds that I am not a U.S. citizen. Therefore, those laws you're trying to shove down my throat does not apply to me. I am 63 years old now. And I'll tell you this, and I know Tomas over there is older than me, but here in Guam, I've never had the opportunity to vote for president, two members to Congress, and members into the House of Representatives. And here today, and every other time we have protests or public hearings when you have it for different bills, you guys are promoting a lie because your function, as you stated in the first day of your term, is to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. Now, my question to you, for the public to hear, are you a true, blue, bona fide, 100% U.S. citizen? Please answer that question. It is crucial to the betterment of this island, to the betterment of the health of the people, because you are in position of power authority. So... Due to your responsibility because of where you're sitting, can you honestly answer that with a yes or a no? Like in the courtrooms, yes or no. Not maybe, not and, yes or no. So my question is, are you a bona fide 100% American citizen? Senators? Sir, with all due respect. Sir, that's your title, right? but I don't honor that. Sir, we're here to um, have a public hearing on this bill. I'm going to ask you if you can make your testimony. I'm getting old. I get hearing problems. We're here for Bill 345, yeah, sir. Yeah, so no, this is all part testify. of it. This is all part of it. Okay, if you can get to the point, This sir. is the story. You know, it ends with it. So let, let's go with the flow. Can that be done? Can we go with the flow? I mean... This is our native island. You are in the position of authority. And, and you know, culturally, language-wise, you even had a problem with my name. Maga Lahi, Maga Aniti. So to prove my point, you know, we're here discussing a bill about marijuana. Wow. I beat the court. I have the court papers. You want me to break it out? It says, I am insane. It says, I am incompetent. But because of my stance, I am not a U.S. citizen. Therefore, those laws do not apply to me. At the very end of the sentence of that three-page paper, it says, dismiss with prejudice. Now, to prove my insanity and my incompetence, can you answer my question? <laughs> it helps me, you know. Come on. Well, what's so hard to answer about a question? Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes or no? Because un as a native of Guam, grow your marijuana. 
why are you going to put these people who needs the marijuana for their health and also if you don't want rage smoke a joint it calms your nerves it's good for you okay you know like uh, road rage smoke a joint you're just going to say go ahead it calms you down medically marijuana has cured illnesses I mean pharmacies doctors they give you pills it doesn't care you it just prolongs the agony and they still continue collecting your money and here marijuana cures and yet the store sells cigarettes and alcohol come on what's the problem here huh? why can't it be done get it over with it's that simple and I know you guys are running for office and you can't answer that question because you know what's going to happen. The truth will prevail because not one of you is a U.S. citizen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, are there anyone else who wish to testify on Bill 345? If there's nobody else, I'm going to ask um, the senators have there any questions for those who have testified. Senator Barnes? Senator Morrison? Senator Adda? Senator um, Torres, nothing. Okay, so um, there being none, this concludes the public hearing on Bill 345-33. Uh, the committee will continue to accept testimonies, written testimonies on this bill. Um, the intent of the committee is to request that uh, this bill be um, brought before the senators prior to the August, um, the beginning of August date that uh, this proposed rules and regulations lapses into law. So it's our intention to address this and bring this to the body before that so that um, we can uh, disapprove it at that time. Okay, and so Senator Barnes, as the subcommittee chair, will be having um, a series of hearings on the other bills, and that would um, then bring that to the forefront, and then we'll come back and uh, address that matter. Then I want to assure you that is every intention of this body to um, ensure that that mandate of the people is carried out. We just want to make sure we do it the right way. Okay? Thank you very much. We're adjourned.